Yo, <laughs> what's up, man? What's up, Freedom Friday? What's up, y'all? So, man, let me tell y'all. First of all, I just want to say that happy Friday, man. Happy weekend. I hope y'all week was good. You know, I'm excited to be back with y'all on Friday because I be waiting all week to jump on here to talk to y'all, man. So today's going to be a fire Freedom Friday. I've been telling y'all that I've been busy. I've been doing so much stuff. So like on Fridays, I'd be having to get on here sometimes to be one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And I said like, man, I really want to prioritize a Freedom Friday where I can really speak to my people. So that's what I'm going to do today. You feel what I'm saying? But first of all, I just want to tell you that I love you. I appreciate you. And I want to pray for you, man. Like the first thing I said I wanted to do was I wanted to pray for the people who will be on Freedom Friday. And I just want to tell you that everything that you're going through, everything that you're facing, it is about to close up. Things are about to shift in your life. You're about to experience like something that you never experienced before. And I just want to know, can y'all feel this shift? Like, let me know in the comment section if you can feel this shift in your life and you're going through spiritual warfare. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to be strong spiritually. Everybody want to be strong and be bossed up in every other area. But what they don't realize is that everything that you have and everything that you that you do comes from your spirituality. It comes from you like outside or inside of this body, should I say. Like if I was to die right now, this body would die, but my spirit would still be living. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for every single person who will see this live. I pray, God, that they will be able to share this live and that they will be a awaken God to your righteousness so that they can understand how to overcome the obstacles and the demonic activity that is fighting against them, trying to hold them down. God, I just release love and peace and supernatural protection over all of your children, Father God. I thank you for the privilege to be here, Father God, in my power position, walking in my authority and teaching your children how to do the same thing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to say, so today it's about being preventive. A lot of times in life, we're waiting for things to happen before we, you know what I'm saying, stand up and do something about it. So if you're going through a tough time, this message is for you. If you're needing money, if you're needing help mentally, physically, spiritually, if you're sick in your body, you know what I'm saying, this message is for you. So I wanted to talk about spiritual warfare, right? I want to tell you this. A lot of people don't realize this, but Every single spirit, whether it's anxiety, whether it's suicide, whether it's a depression, whether it's a sickness, every single spirit has gained legal access into your life. You know what something means to have a, a legal access? That means that you've given it permission or it's gotten permission from a higher person from you or from somebody higher than you to be able to be in your life. So every single demon in your life, every single spirit that is interfering with your life right now has come to your life through the access that you've given it to them. But now you have to revoke this access. And a lot of people don't know how to revoke this access and to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to take my position, I'm going to take my authority back, and I'm going to stand, you know what I'm saying, and what it is, the freedom that God has for me. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I got some notes, so that's what I'm looking at on my phone. I want to be strategic on what it is I'm talking about. I know this already, but I want to be strategic on what I'm sharing with y'all. Uh, but many people don't realize that They've given the enemy access. So I want to say a lot of times you just tolerate it because you're not aware of the fact that it's a demonic spirit or that it's a spirit that's trying to, you know what I'm saying, uh, bother you. And people get spooked out whenever you hear demonic spirits. I don't get scared because a demonic spirit is nothing. Spirits or literally what me and you are. You feel what I'm saying? Demons or literally disembodied spirits. So there are people without bodies who are here to be able to torture you and cause you to lead to uh, go on a road of destruction. You know what I'm saying? And really mess with your life. But listen, I'm about to tell you the secrets on how you invite these spirits into your life. Here you go. You ready? It's through TV. It's through music. It's through words and atmospheres that you partake in. So whether it's coming out of your mouth or whether you're listening to it, the different stuff that you're doing, all of that is literally attracting these demonic entities. Or generationally, maybe your mom dealt with it. Maybe your family dealt with it. And these demons just got legal access into your life through generations. You feel me? A lot of times that's what happened. But it's okay because we, we set free. God is setting us free. You know what I'm saying? Also, just maybe through your family. I know there was a once upon a time where I was living with 
dealing with people and literally the demons that they were possessing were literally trying to like bother me. You feel what I'm saying? And I had to kind of like boss up over my own atmosphere and create a shift in my own environment. Another thing that you can do is soul ties. A lot of people get scared when you hear about this. What's up, uh, Chris? What's up, Seth? All right, y'all. What's going on, y'all? Okay. A lot of people get scared whenever you talk about soul ties because they don't understand it. But a soul tie is literally just... It doesn't necessarily always have to be a sexual encounter. A lot of times it is, though. So if you're having sex with somebody who is possessed or they're under some type of demonic oppression, you can literally attract that onto yourself. But it also could be a soul tie from your kids, from your family. It's literally just anybody who you came into mental agreement with and allowed your soul to be tied with their soul. And then that spirit now has legal access to you. So, for instance, it's like... um. Say that for some reason, I'm going to give you an example. Say that I start dating a female, right? And she's addicted to smoking. She can't stop smoking. She has a, a spirit of addiction over her, right? Literally, because I'm like sleeping with her, messing with her, chilling with her. Now, all of a sudden, I might not, might not like the same addiction that she likes. But some way, somehow, that spirit of addiction gets latched on to me. And now I become addicted to different things. This is how you break free out of this stuff, though. It's okay if you find yourself in this situation because every Everybody at some point in their life goes through demonic oppression or they're just being afflicted or possession. A lot of times people are not able to tell the differences. To be possessed by a demon is a demon is living inside of you. To just be afflicted is there just tormenting you or bothering you. Either way, you deal with them all pretty much the same way. You just have to agree with God. A lot of times people don't realize the only thing you have to do is agree with God. But first you have to spend time learning what God says. He's given you the authority. He's giving you the power. You just have to utilize it. Now, like I said, demons are disembodied spirits that constantly look for expression through earthly bodies so that they can feel something and use your authority. Why does demons want to torture you? You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, why do these demons want to bother me? It's because they don't have what you have. You have the authority because you have a physical body. You feel what I'm saying? They want to be able to use your body to express their evil deeds. That's what it is. When God created the earth, he said, I'm going to give humans the dominion over the earth. Earth, right? So angels, which is on God's team, demons, that's against that's on the devil's side. Either one of them really don't have access to do anything unless we give them permission. You feel what I'm saying? So the fact that I'm even on here right now, I've given God the permission to use me to be here to be a source of light to you. Now, if I wanted to go on here and be of the devil, I would give the devil the authority to use me to be on here to be dark. You feel what I mean? And a lot of people don't realize they give their authority to the devil to cause them to have and to be dark. But then that's where anxiety and depression and suicide, all of that stuff that you see manifested in the physical, it all started in the spiritual first. So you might say, well, Marcel, how do I know if I'm under spiritual attack? How do I know if I'm being attacked? How do I, you know what I'm saying? What if I'm just having a bad day? Does that mean I'm being attacked? Whatever. No, sometimes it's just life issues. Stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? Everything is not a demonic attack. But I'm going to give you some examples of uh, when you might be under spiritual attack. You ready? You're dealing with fear. So if you're always fearful of something going wrong, or you feel like you feel that spirit of fear over you, right? Fear, sickness, sickness in your body, uh, anxiety. If you have addictions, if you're having a lot of nightmares, you know what I mean? If you're uh, overeating, a lot of people don't realize this, but overeating is a spirit too. Um, anger. If all of a sudden you're enraged and you're mad about something, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're possessed, but it could mean that you're being irritated because of a demon. You might just be going through a lot too, but this is another thing. If you feel rage and you sit up there and you say like, I'm not even mad, but yet I feel enraged. You know what I'm saying? That's another sign. Issues, um, that continue to keep resurfacing. Like if you overcome something and then it keeps coming back to you, that's probably a demonic attack. Torment. If you feel like you're just being tormented with something, depression, laziness, sexual perversion, you feel what I'm saying? Um, rejection. If you're feeling rejected all the time, abused. If you're trauma bound, which means at all, every single last one of us dealt with traumas growing up and some people still deal with them today. But if you're like under the oppression of that, then you're trauma bound. That's usually a spirit. Or isolation. Demons always want to keep you isolated so that you can't rise up and be connected to people who can help you, like myself and other people. Uh, doubt, worthlessness, or if you feel the spirit of death. 
So those are just a few. So you go through them and you see if that's something you're dealing with. And this, this doesn't mean that they can't come in different forms. I just wanted to give you some examples. Every feeling that you possess, every feeling that I'm talking about is if you were rejected by God. So every single demonic entity, what they do is they just project onto you how they feel. You got to remember, God rejected them. You feel what I'm saying? God doesn't give them the same access that he gives to us. We have life. We have like every his mercies are new for us each morning. God forgives us. So if you fall short, if you sinned, if you did something wrong, God forgives you. He loves you and he will pick you back up. But you got to remember, a demon doesn't have that privilege. So what happens is they're living outside of the grace of God. So they're trying to project that fear, that anxiety, that depression, those suicidal thoughts, that that despair because they don't have nothing to hold on to. You, however, you have hope. You have joy. You have Jesus Christ who saves you and you're going to spend eternity eternity in heaven. So you're covered. You know what I'm saying? You're truly blessed. Even if you deal with spiritual warfare or not spiritual warfare, but like be demonically attacked all the way up until the day you die, you still go to heaven. You're covered. God loves you. He's taking care of you. But I want to give you some tips on how to overcome this and how to fight against this. The first thing I want to say is decide to change your mind. Decide that you're no longer going to be a victim no more. You got to kind of get tired of the bully. Demons are like bullies who really can't beat you. You feel what I mean? You know how there's a bully that be trying to beat on everybody because they got a mouth. But really, if you grip them up, they really can't handle you. That's really what a demon is. They can't really handle you. They don't have the power or the authority that you have. But you have the first thing you have to do is you have to wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to change my mind about this. I'm going to stop just taking this and just sitting in this, right? The second thing you got to do is you have to agree with God. A lot of people are not able to break through whatever they're dealing with because they, they refuse to agree with God because for some reason they feel like God really ain't going to help. Like that's too, it takes too much work to pray and to do all that stuff. But I'm telling you, listen, it's not that hard. Like, and I'm going to give you a secret. What you can do is like anything that you're feeling is sad that you're bothered with, you can literally Google. It's so easy now days. You could Google like, I'm dealing with sadness. I'm dealing with addiction. I'm dealing with, you know, a lack of finances. The enemy attacks your finances. But whatever you're dealing with, you could literally look up a Bible scripture. This is how you know you agree with God or not. Look up a Bible scripture and whatever that Bible scripture is telling you is truth. And when you decide to stand in that truth, you're deciding to agree with God. Right there, you're already overcoming a demon. The mental agreement that you have with God's word literally fights for you. It's like, uh, the word of God is a spirit that fights for you once you agree with it. But first, you got to put yourself in position. The devil wants to make the Bible seem so boring. Want to make it like, don't pray to God. You know what I mean? It's too hard to pray. It's too hard to read. It's too hard. He wants you to feel like everything about God is too hard. Meanwhile, it's so much easier than dealing with anxiety and depression and addictions and dealing with lack and poverty. Reading the Bible and spending time with God is so much easier than being being oppressed and depressed for years. And I feel, I feel, I was talking to somebody and this is what I told them. In life, you're going to have to deal with hard things. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to deal with hard things, but it's so much harder to stay down and be bound than it would be to just get up and put the energy that it takes to be free. Like it takes energy to be free, but it's so much uh, like easier to be free than what it is to stay bound. And a lot of people don't realize that, but that's usually because they're under demonic attack. You feel me? Okay. So like I was telling you, if you're just tuning in, what's going on, y'all? Make sure you get, bro said, decide to change your mind. Make sure you realize, make sure you uh, go listen to the beginning of this video because I talked about this is how you know if you're dealing with a spiritual attack that you need to come out of, right? But here are some ways to break out of that. The first thing is decide to change your mind. The second thing is write down the lies that you're being told. There's spirits that are telling you lies. Like, for instance, you're ugly or you'll never be married or you'll always be sick or you'll always be broke or your kids will never forgive you or you're not a good mom, a good dad. You know what I'm saying? You can never get out the streets. You'll never stop smoking. You'll never get over this anxiety, this depression. Those are different spirits who are lying to you because that everything comes to an end. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says that there's a time for uh, death or birth and there's a time for death. So every single thing in a middle everything comes to an end but write down the lies that you're being told that keeps playing in your head something happens when you expose the lie you see what i mean if somebody can keep a secret it's like if somebody's telling lies about you but everybody's keeping it a secret and then all of a sudden one of your good friends come and they tell you the truth like you know this person is going around saying this about you 
Once that lie is exposed, now you can stand up in truth like that's not what happened. This is what happened. And from there, all of a sudden, that lie starts getting broken down until the truth is revealed. But the devil wants to just keep telling you these lies in your mind. But when you write them down, it's like now you're exposing them. Now you're bringing them to the light. So I want you to write down the lies that are going over in your head. Get a notebook. Now, I'm a life coach. So this is what I'm giving you all some secrets to what I usually charge people to do. But I'm sharing it with you guys for free. So listen here. Get a notebook and write down the lies that you feel like the enemy is telling you in your mind that keeps playing over. Believe it or not. You agree with these spirits and gave them legal access, even if you just let the lies play in the background in your mind from childhood. So the way that a spirit gets you to mentally agree with it is like it's almost like we're so used to hearing what our physical ears like the way you're hearing me that you're not able to really discern whenever somebody is talking to you in your spiritual ears. You feel what I'm saying? Like not your physical ones, but your spiritual ones. So what happens are what happens is these disembodied spirits will whisper to you like you're worthless. You know, nobody loves you. You'll never be able to accomplish that. And because you don't hear it physically, you just think like you're just thinking these thoughts, right? And it might be something that they started when you was eight or 10 or nine or whatever. And what happens is this gets built up in your mind so deeply that you start believing it. And once you believe it, you came into mental agreement with it, with those lies. And then that's why you start feeling so weighed down and you feel like there's something heavy on you. So when you write this stuff down, you're able to see like, wow, I really really believe that. That's really what's in my mind, that I'm worthless, that I can't, you know, get out of this curse or this, I can't, um, you know, fix my marriage or whatever it is your problem is. I can't, I'm not pretty or I'm not handsome or I'm not strong. All of these things are lies in your mind. And it's usually it started in childhood. You know what I mean? From being molested, from being abandoned from your parents. If your parents abuse you, if somebody got killed in front of you through trauma, the enemy used trauma-based things to be able to sneak up on you because he knows you're distracted with being molested. You're distracted with being, um, dealing with abuse from your parents. You're distracted with people dying around your parents arguing and fighting. So while you're being distracted by what you see in the physical, the spirit realm is like, you know what? This is the perfect time for us to start implanting those lies in our mind. And then let's just continue to do it. They'll think that it's just themselves. These are, this is really what's happening. This is why so many people are dealing with this, but today you're being set free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. So listen, every lie needs to be replaced with truth. Now, when you get a notebook and you start writing down these lies, don't stop there. The next step is to start realizing this is since I know these are lies, what's the truth? Well, remember, the only thing that's the truth is scripture. Bible scriptures, literally, I think it says the word is, or God, Jesus' word, or the word is like a two-edged sword. It goes through flesh and bone, marrow, spirit, which means God's word knows how to catch you right where you're at. It can go through all the slickery. It goes through your mind, the physical, the spiritual. It hits you in that deep place where like, oh, I can't get, I can't go nowhere else. It traps you. Like God's word speaks so much truth that you can't even go nowhere else. So every lie that the devil spoke over you, you have to look up the scripture to counter, to counter, uh, to replace it, to counter, uh, what's the word called? Not counterfeit, but, um, counteract or something like that. You have to literally replace the laugh with the truth. So for instance, if the enemy said you're ugly, you're not attractive. Nobody will ever love you. That's a lie that so many people that I deal with life coaching, whether you're male or female, the enemy makes people feel like they're hideous. Meanwhile, you're beautiful. You're made in the image of God. You, when God sees you, he sees himself because you're beautiful, right? So, a good Bible verse for that is you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And it says that God made man after his image and after his own likeness. God is beautiful. He's wrapped in splendor and majesty. And if you look like him, then the only person that would think that you're ugly is a person who doesn't look like him, which is the devil, because the enemy is not uh, made in God's image. So he's just jealous. You feel what I'm saying? But the Bible verse to, com to combat that you're not good looking or something like that would be, you know what I'm saying? I'm wonderfully and I'm fearfully made. Um, there's so many Bible scriptures for every single lie. So you have to write down a lie and then you have to look at the Bible scripture to replace it. Now, this is how you start breaking mental agreements. The same way that you came into mental agreement with these lies, you have to now come into mental agreement with the truth. So it's not just good enough to write down the lies 
or to just replace it with truth. But now you need to confess it out loud because these spirits need to know I'm using my authority that you don't have. See, spirits want to be able to possess your body so that they can use the only thing that gives you authority on this earth, which is what? Your words. The only reason why you have authority on this earth is because you can speak. If you were all of a sudden to die and you were just to be standing there in your spirit and your body would hit the floor, you no longer would have authority in this earth. Now you're like, I don't have no authority in the earth because I can't speak. The earth only responds to somebody who speaks with a voice who has vibrations. Like the earth is literally physical, tangible, and it's alive, but it needs it needs a voice to respond to it. So the reason why it's important to write down the mental lies and then to write down the truth and then to confess it is because this is how you start using your authority. This is how you take back the grounds. You ready? Confess out loud and you have to tell these spirits, you have to tell these demons to go. You got to tell them to go. You got to say you're exposed. It's time for you to go. And then you have to remind them that they don't have any legal ground to be in your life anymore to be oppressing you. And then what you want to do is quote the Bible scripture that you wrote down that speaks against that lie. So, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. So let's use the uh, unattractive one, right? You're not attractive. Nobody loves you. Just use that one, right? Okay. So if I had that plan in my mind for years, say I was young and somebody said, you're hideous, bullied or something, and it's in my mind. What you have to do now is you have to write down, okay, the lie is this. You put lie. I am hideous or I'm unattractive. The truth, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. That's Bible scripture, right? Now what I would do is I would say, Devil, you're exposed. You told me for years that I was unattractive and hideous, but the tr and that was a lie. The truth is that I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. And then what I would say is, I now break the mental agreement that I made with you to believe that I was unattractive. And now I mentally agree with the fact that I am wonderfully and fearfully made. You have to legal, you have to legally say it. This is like if I take you to court. If it's God and the devil, they're at court. You have to be the person who speak. Use your authority. I break the mental agreement with this lie and now I mentally agree with the truth God's word and this is the truth and then you just want to quote that and you want to say that the demons, they start shaking. They get shooken up. Like, uh, even before I came on here today, I went through a little bit of uh, spiritual warfare, but it was okay because I always win because I know how to use my authority. I use my words. You feel me? You have to speak it. Now, after you speak this, I want you to be able to get a confession book or create a confession book. There's something that I use that's called God's Creative Power. I don't know if I have one. I'm going to try to see if I got it. But there's a book that's called God's Creative Power. And literally, here it is right here. Thank you. There's a book. It's called God's Creative Power. I say these every... Listen. I know these by heart now, right? This is what I said. This is what I mean when I say get a confessional book. This book has Bible scriptures, but they break it down into ways where it's like you're talking. You ready? I'll read something. Uh, I, I know all of these already because I say them every day. Like I say this maybe three times a day. How about this? Uh, I'm an overcomer and I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Christ has redeemed me from every curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from poverty. Christ has redeemed me from sickness and Christ has redeemed me from spiritual death. Listen to this. For poverty... Christ has given me wealth. So now I'm speaking against poverty in case my bills need to get paid. And I don't have enough money for poverty. I don't deal with poverty. That's a spirit for poverty. God has given me wealth for, uh, for, for sickness. If I feel sick in my body or something's happening for sickness, Christ has given me health, right? For death, Christ has given me eternal life. It is true unto me. According to your word, God, uh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See what I'm saying? I speak God's word back to him. You got to speak to these spirits out loud, but you have to use God's word. When people just cuss spirits out, man, F the devil. He don't care about that because you're speaking, but you're not really speaking with any truth. So you don't really have authority to combat against him. The devil will continue to oppress you if you do not use God's word to speak the truth over it. Like I said, a lot of times you don't know what what lies are being told to you. So just write down all the things that you feel oppressed about. Remember I said it. I'm going to go through them again at the end. I'm going to tell you these are the signs that you might be dealing with spiritual attacks. But listen, okay, replace the lie with the truth, right? Get a confessional book or create your own. A lot of times if you already know the things that are like 
oppressing you and you look at the Bible scriptures, write them down in a notebook and create your own confessional notebook, right? And you could do this wherever, however, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's for you and God, right? Everybody thinks like, I just, I'm not smart enough. Yes, you are. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? God said he gives wisdom to you without reproach, which means you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the right season. You don't have to be delivered. And no, God will give you wisdom. Listen, okay. This is important too. Um, get a confession book, create your own or whatever area, whenever you need. Okay. So whenever those thoughts come up, whenever those lies come back up to you, it's like the devil wants to play ping pong with you. He wants to keep hitting the lie to you, but you got to just keep hitting the truth. So a lot of people are like, bro, I said these truths, you know what I mean? I'm a life coach. So I teach people this and they're like, bro, I was saying that, but for some reason I was still feeling depressed. And I tell people, oh, the devil just is trying to play ping pong with your emotions. He's trying to hit the ball back to you. Like I'm going to give you the lie again because he wants to test you to see if you're actually going to stay on the truth that you're confessing, which means this, whenever he hits you with a lie again, hit, hit it back to him with the truth. Hit Like you got to do that for a minute. And then he starts feeling like I'm wasting my time with them. They're not going to let up. Let me disappear. So listen, keep confessing these things that I'm telling you, get this book, God's creative power or create your own, but keep confessing that until you believe it, because this is the truth. You receive what you believe. So because the devil came to you and he gave you to m believe these mental agreements, you're receiving that. So now you need to be able to mentally agree with God's word and you will receive that. Keep confessing until you believe and then confess. When you're confessing this, you'll eventually believe it and then you'll have exactly what it is that you're uh, believing. So like, for instance, I was telling somebody today, one of my one of my students that I you know, I mean, talked to, I was telling them how I manifested a. Uh, a, a car, like a dream car that I wanted, right? And this is how I manifested it. I said, God, he's God. He's powerful. He can do all things. If God was to reveal to you how big and strong he was and bring you to heaven, anything he says to you, you will bow down and do immediately, right? Because that's just what it is that you would do because you would see God and all of his power, all of his authority. And you would say, you know what? Uh, this man is strong. So let me back up and let me you know what I'm saying? Do it. But this is the thing that God does. He says, now, because I'm this big, the only way to please me is by faith. So God says, the way you can really show me love or the way that you can really uh, pay me back is in faith. So the only way that you can build your faith is by hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So as you start confessing these things and as you start believing it, then it releases your faith. But this is how I got the car. I got sidetracked real fast. Okay. I got a vision board and I put the car on the vision board. You feel me? And I kept on saying, God, thank you for this car. Thank you for this car. And then I kept saying, God gives me the desires of my heart. That's a Bible verse. I kept confessing it. And then as I, at first I didn't believe it. I'm going to be real with y'all. I seen it and I desired it. This could be healing. This could be husbands, wives, kids, whatever. I wanted the car, but I didn't really believe that I can get it. But let me tell you how, how powerful confession is. I kept confessing that God was going to give it to me, that he would give me the, the desires of my heart. And then out of nowhere, I start believing it. It's like what I start confessing, I started believing. And then guess what happened? I received it. I received it because I start believing it. So start confessing it. Praying in tongues. I want to tell y'all, if you don't know how to pray in tongues, ask God to help you give you your prayer language. That's, that's the way that you really can fight the devil without even really knowing how you're doing it. Praying in tongue stirs you up and activates God's power in you, and it helps you decide uh, to focus on God, and it releases a supernatural power that overcomes the devil by itself when you pray in tongues. So if you know how to do it, start doing that or ask God to help you pray in tongues. Watch videos on YouTube about it, everything. Okay, when it comes up, like whenever that uh, last starts coming up, you got to say it's done. And confess what you've been confessing. Just keep confessing it, and you'll see it. It'll leave you. It'll, it'll disappear. Okay. I'm almost finished. If God's led you. Okay. So sometimes after you're done confessing, God might lead you. So I was helping my mom with something and God revealed to me that the enemy was trying to attack her through the spirit of treason. You feel me? Which means he wasn't really allowed to do it. But I told her she needed to use her words to start confessing God's word. Now, after doing that, God might say something like, now go on a fast. Or I want you to read a book on love. It might be like a traumatic thing that happened to you when you're a kid and you're scarred and you're dealing with trauma. And you might say, you know what I mean? I'm an overcomer and I no longer deal with trauma. But now God might say, okay, now you confess that. But now I want you to read a book on love. So always listen for what God is telling you to do because he's always trying to 
heal you and help you come out of whatever you're dealing with. I want to just give you some scriptures too. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means physical, but they're mighty through God's pulling down of strongholds. What you're doing right now, what I'm teaching you how to do is to pull down strongholds. Then Luke 10, 19 says this, I have given you authority to trample on snakes. These are demons, scorpions, demons. And to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. So I want to say there's a way where you can be untouchable, but not unattackable. Uh, so the enemy can always try to attack you, but you'll get to a place where you're untouchable. And this is how you know you're untouchable. You see the attacks, you feel the attacks, but you have peace. It's like the enemy's attacking me, but I'm at peace. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really thrown off. I kind of see that he's attacking me, but I'm still at peace. This is how you know when you're at peace. Whenever you see the enemy attacking you, but you're at peace, that means that you're now, you've now become untouchable. Not unattackable, but untouchable. But I want to read Psalms 18, 19, because a lot of times people feel like, Marcel, this all sounds lovely, and I wish that I was where you're at spiritually to be able to do this, but it's hard for me. I want to tell you that God also looks at you like his baby. He loves you so much. So listen to this. This is Psalms 18, 19, and it talks about how God rescues you. The Bible says, he brought me forth also into a large place, and he delivered me because he delighted in me. A lot of times, y'all, if I'm going through spiritual warfare and I feel too tired and I feel too weak or I feel like, God, I'm tired of fighting and, you know what I mean, I'm tired of confessing and speaking and it's just becoming too much. I'll just tell him, God, your word says that you deliver me because you delight in me. So I need you to deliver me from this because this is starting to get on my nerves too much. And then all of a sudden, God steps in and he delivers you. It's all about building you up. It's all about letting you be able to see your own strength. The devil is here to reveal to you your own strength. You feel me? But God will rescue you. Sometimes it's too much for you. Ask God to deliver you because he delights in you. And that's Psalms 1819. The last one I want to leave you off with before I get out of here is Ephesians 616. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Which with which you can extinguish all the fiery darts that the enemy throws at you. The enemy stays throwing fiery darts at you, right? And what you can do is hold up the shield of faith. That shield of faith looks like no matter what you throw at me, I'm going to always bounce back. It's the armor of God. Like Steph said, what's going on, Grace? What's up, sister? What's up, Steph? Exactly. The armor of God is literally what protects you so that you can block off all the attacks in the enemy. And you got to go through the armor of God. It's the helmet of salvation. It's the belt of truth. It's the breastplate of righteousness. It's the sword of the word of God. It's the shoes of peace. You know what I mean? Look this stuff up. Once you start looking up Google and doing this stuff and stuff, Studying and finding yourself approved, you'll start having the tactics, the the uh, the tools to be able to fight against the enemy and be able to overcome all these spiritual attacks that you're dealing with. Because one thing about God's kids, He's going to raise them up. He's going to put them in a position to be able to dominate on the earth. And he wants you to be able to uh, lead other people into freedom. A lot of y'all have businesses. You don't have to be a preacher or a pastor. I don't consider myself a preacher or a pastor or anything. I'm a speaker and I'm just a child of God. And I just come on here and I teach all the things that my father teaches me. So I want to tell y'all, man, you don't have to feel like there's some special prophetic anointing over you. You don't got to call yourself a prophetess or a prophet or anything. You could just be a simple child of God, and that is enough. You don't have to feel like you have any special gifts. God loves you. He created you, and he's given you the same power and authority he's given me. So being spiritually strong is being preventive. Don't wait to feel like you're under attack to do these things. Do these things regularly so that whenever the enemy tries to attack you, you're already prepared. You're already armored up. You've already been like, please get out of here. And a lot of times he won't even try because you're just steadily always on go. He sees you and it's just like, oh, he's on go. I'm going to leave him alone. He's on go. Another thing I want to say is remember that God will never put you in an attack that he has not prepared you to win. So any attack that you're in is because God's already seen the attack and he already knew that you will win. So don't feel like it's too much for you. Don't feel like you can't do it. Know that you've already won the battle and that Jesus is helping you and he's fighting for you. And literally by him dying on the cross and being resurrected, he's already fought in the biggest spiritual warfare you'll ever go through, which is death. So no matter what, you have eternal life. So be encouraged and just know that you have more power than what you're using and know that God is with you. And anything I'm saying to you, the Holy Spirit will teach you it himself. So ask him to teach you this and then watch this video a couple of times, share it with some people and man, be encouraged. And I love y'all so much. 
today is my stepdad's birthday, so I have to leave to go celebrate him. But I want to tell y'all, man, that I love you so much. God bless you. And I want to pray with you. So, Father God, every single one of my brothers and sisters who's dealing with demonic attack, who's dealing with spiritual warfare, Father, I pray that you would just illuminate their minds, God, that you would enlighten the eyes of their understanding, God, that you would teach them what it is and what it takes, Holy Spirit, to be able to fight against these weak, dumb, defeated, stupid, uh, rejected spirits that are trying to project their feelings and their emotions onto your children, God. I just come up against it. I curse it. I block it. I loosen heavenly hosts from heaven, Father God, to go shred and stop and to push back every demonic entity of darkness, God, and to cause uh, regions of light, Lord. I also release spiritual ministering angels into everybody's home right now, Father God, that they will be encouraged, that they will be stirred up, Father. I ask, Lord, that those uh, and angels that release you, ministering angels, to go sing songs of deliverance over God's children so that uh, it can create an atmosphere for God's uh, power and authority to show up to deliver his children. I thank you, God, because your word tells us that you deliver those who you delight in. And God, you delight in all of your children because you see yourself. So, Lord, I ask that you would encourage them, inspire them, and Holy Spirit, teach them what you have taught me. And I thank you, Jesus. I release the impartation of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to them in Jesus' name. And we pray. Amen. Amen, y'all. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. You have the armor of God. All is good. That's what's up, man. God bless y'all. I love y'all so much. What's up, Aaron? What's up, bro? I see you on here. I love y'all, bro. Okay. I love y'all. I'm going to dip. I'm going to get up out of here, but I ask you to share this message. God bless you. And until next time, I will see you. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Peace.